Last year, we spent more than $150 million on ice cream, each of us downing, on average, an impressive 27 litres. That seems like a lot. Do we really have that much? Just on special occasions, really. We'd probably go through a two litre tub every three months. It's usually a treaty thing, maybe once every couple of months. <laughs> once a week. Someone's eating a lot of ice cream. Together with Australia, we are the second biggest consumers of ice cream in the world after the USA. So I want to find out how much is healthy for my kids and me. But first, what actually is ice cream? The Food Standards Code defines ice cream as a sweet frozen food made from milk or cream products with a minimum of 10% milk fat. So how is it that ice cream is creamy when it's frozen? And what else goes into the mix? I'm off to get the scoop from Murray Taylor, inventor of goody goody gumdrops and considered the Willy Wonka of New Zealand ice cream. Murray, let's make ice cream. Right. Let's do it. These days, Murray's making organic ice cream. First thing, we're going to put some milk in. OK. The milk is pumped in from a holding tank. I'm yeah. just going to get uh, some sugar. This is, and I'm going to put it in my hopper. And then I'm going to get some more um, sugar that's blended with my gums. Gums are added to most ice creams as a stabiliser. Now I need to add, add some milk powder. So this is extra milk powder to build my milk solids up in the mixture. Milk solids are the protein and fat part of milk. And I have to put the rest of the sugar on top of that. The whole bag? Whole bag. Wow, do you, do you need a hand? Yep, that's the third lot of sugar. It adds sweetness and lowers the freezing point of ice cream, stopping it from becoming a solid block of ice. And now we're ready to add the cream. And now you can see the colour changing. Yeah. Cream adds fat and fat content varies. A standard ice cream has 10% fat, while a premium ice cream is anything from 12% and up. You should taste it and just to see I, what I, it tastes like. You I think? think that's, that's nice. a good idea. There you go. Be warm. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Creamy. Creamy, sweet. sweet. Very worth getting a shower cap and scrubs on for. Next, the mix is heated to 70 degrees to kill any potential germs. There's only one problem, Murray. It's hot. We want to make ice cream. So what happens next? Exactly. Well, we've got to quickly cool it. In 30 seconds, we zoom it right down to 4 degrees. Once it's cooled, next comes the flavouring. But it's still liquid, and we are missing an essential ingredient. Well, now we need to freeze it. So we need to take it from the 4 degrees down to minus 4. As it's being frozen, air is beaten into the ice cream. Putting air in the ice cream makes it soft to eat. It also makes it more creamy. So without any air in the ice cream, you can't scoop it. So you're telling me that half of the ice cream I'm getting is fresh air? I'm feeling a bit ripped off, Murray. So if we didn't put air in it, you'd have like a block of ice and you would enjoy it. When ice cream melts, it reduces in volume. It's the air escaping just like a balloon. But how much of the final product is actually air? We sent a range of products to the lab. We found the two litre products were all around half air. The premium ice cream contained less at 37%. So now we know how it's made, but I'm curious to know, are we getting any beneficial nutrients along with the fat and sugar in ice cream? So Claire, I have to confess, I've got a few ice cream fans at my house, my children love it, and I kind of fancy it too, but you're the nutritionist, tell me, is there anything redeeming about ice cream? Well, apart from it tastes good, um, because it's uh, made from dairy products, it is a reasonable source of calcium and protein. And in fact, the Ministry of Health guidelines recommend us to eat three servings of dairy per day, and one of the recommendations is uh, ice cream. So we're being recommended to eat ice cream, that's got to be good news. Well, it's one of the servings. And that's for the calcium content. So how much is in ice cream? Well, some products are a much better source of calcium than others. 
We tested six products and found the low-fat ice creams have the most. One brand's low-fat product has three times more calcium than its regular ice cream. As for protein, again, low-fat ice creams are a much better source. That's because when the fat comes out, more of the protein in the milk solids goes in. So, if we select carefully, ice cream can be a source of calcium and protein. But other dairy products like reduced fat milk, yogurt and cheese are better options. Choosing an ice cream seems harder than ever. Last year, we exported $43 million worth and imported $20 million worth, mainly luxury and specialty ice creams. All up, we are spoilt for choice. You get two little ice creams in a cone about that size. Two for a penny. You seem to get a bigger serving these days. You've certainly got a big choice. You're sort of um, stumped for what you're going to ask for, actually. So I stick to hokey pokey. In most countries, vanilla, chocolate and strawberry are the top three favourite flavours. Here, industry tells us hokey pokey, pips, chocolate and strawberry. Thank you. But do we still love it? Or is all the choice shattered our loyalty? It would have to be chocolate. I'd probably like raspberry, jelly tip. Cookies and cream. Triple chocolate. Of the 50 people we asked, only two said pokey pokey. Coming up, what harm is lurking in ice cream? Sugar is doing more harm than we previously thought. And is low fat ice cream really a healthier choice? It's a bit devastating really. <laughs> a source of calcium and protein, but it comes with plenty of cream and sugar. So how much should we be having and what effects does it have on us? One of the more curious effects is sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. And lots of people experience it when they eat ice cream. It's a splitting headache caused by cold ice cream rapidly cooling blood vessels in the roof of the mouth. As they warm again, the vessels expand, sending a pain signal to the brain along a major facial nerve. So the brain thinks the pain's coming from the forehead. Apparently, it's impossible to get an ice cream headache in a cold environment. Well, I'm going to find out. No, no brain freeze here. How about in warm surroundings? Oh, but here, it hurts. So that's a fact. But are there more serious health effects from eating ice cream? New research shows that we don't all taste fat in the same way, and weight problems could be related to our ability to taste fat. Matt, tell me about your research. What were you trying to find out? When you think about fat in a food like an ice cream, you tend to think of it in terms of something like creaminess, which is very much a texture-based response. But we're also interested to see whether fat is acting actually as a taste in the same way that we get with sweetness, sourness and bitterness. They found that some people were better at tasting fat than others. We found that the high fat tasters actually consumed less food and generally had a lower body mass index as well. So if you're not good at tasting fat, you may eat more fat to feel satisfied. There's a relatively simple experiment that you can do just to see whether you are yourself able to detect fat. Um, and that's just to take a glass of standard milk and a glass of light milk and see if you can tell the difference between the two. Which is what you've got here. Absolutely. Okay. So it might be fun to just have a quick go now. Okay. So without looking... I'll face this way. You might want to just try these two different glasses very okay, quickly. So if I put that in there... my hand. Okay. I think that's the full... Standard milk. Well, let's see what you think about that one then. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm. No, I think that's the standard milk. Actually, I don't know. Well, I think just to prove that it's obviously quite different for everybody, that is the regular milk. That's the regular. And that is the low fat milk. See, when I look at them, I think, God, that's so obvious. I'm quite embarrassed I got that one wrong. Well, I'm not so good at detecting fat. And whether we can taste it or not, the saturated fat in ice cream has consequences for our health. Premium ice creams are around 10% saturated fat. 
saturated fat unquestionably increase cholesterol, increase insulin resistance, and these are undoubtedly important risk factors for heart disease and other diseases. So if we're looking to avoid fat, is low fat ice cream a good option? And how does it stack up on the taste front? The yellow one's got water in. Yeah, basically that's about it. It's just creamier than, than the yellow. Well, the one on the orange tray is low fat, and the one on the yellow tray is not. Oh, it's a bit um, devastated, really. <laughs> no way. Why, why is that devastating? Well, no, because I always thought low fat was like rubbish. You know, I sort of avoid it like the plague, really. I like the yellow one better. What about the yellow one? I like the yellow. I like them both the same. Both the same? Yeah. Would it surprise you to know that the ones on the orange tray, which you like the best, are the low fat ice creams? That's fantastic. That's, that that's a bonus, definitely. <laughs> What did we find? Well, regular fat ice cream still came out on top, but low fat wasn't far behind. 35% preferred it, and 18% thought it was just as good as the regular stuff. Low fat ice cream has considerably less saturated fat at around 2%. It's a better source of calcium and protein, and can even taste okay. So is it a better option? There is merit in those products for people trying to limit their fat intake, but of course one needs to remember that they are often, indeed, usually very high in sugar. Low-fat ice creams are around 21% sugar. An important aspect of the sugar content of ice cream is the kilojoules. And kilojoule-dense foods like ice cream contribute to obesity. We are indirectly talking about increasing the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and a number of very important cancers, and a list of other problems that is as long as your arm. But it's not just the kilojoules that are attracting attention. There's increasing evidence that sugar is doing more harm than we previously thought, that it's not just empty calories. Ordinary sugar is half fructose and half glucose, and it's the fructose part of sugar that's raising concern. Fructose has been linked with all sorts of adverse health effects. Uh, for example, high blood pressure, uh, low levels of good cholesterol, weight gain, obesity, and also rotten teeth. Fructose also doesn't trigger the hormones that tell us when we're satisfied and it's been associated with overeating. If somebody with a sweet tooth opens a tub of ice cream, um, they might easily consume the whole lot uh, without thinking hard about it. That, that tolerance, that drive from the sugar leads to an automatic behaviour. They almost do it without thinking about it. When compared to their brand's regular ice cream, some low-fat ice creams have an extra two grams of sugar per 100 grams. But overall, we found low-fat ice creams have around 180 kilojoules less than regular ice creams. So, if I want to avoid ice creams with the most sugar, which products deliver the greatest sugar hit? Some chocolate-coated ice creams on a stick contain 33 grams of sugars. An equivalent amount of standard ice cream in a bowl delivers 19 grams of sugars. There's sugar-free ice creams, but they may have a downside as well. Sugar-free ice creams usually contain sorbitol or maltitol. These are sugar alcohols that are not as sweet as sugar, but um, have less calories because you can't digest them as easily. And they've been deemed safe for inclusion in our foods, but if levels are more than 10%, the product must carry a warning that they may have a laxative effect. The reason for that is that the bugs in your lower intestine can digest the sugar alcohol better than you can, and that's the origin of the laxative effect. So there's no perfect ice cream, but if I'm going to eat it, how much should I have? They may be young, but these are experienced ice cream eaters. My favourite is gooey gooey jam drops. Boysenberry. All of them. Mango. Mango's my favourite. Most kids love ice cream, but how much are we serving up? Could it be too much? No! Or not enough, according to these ice cream experts. Ice cream! Ice cream! Ice cream! Ice cream! We've enlisted four leaders from the Green Bay Kias. We've 
we've asked them to dish up their standard serving to see if they're giving the kids too much. The ice cream's not lasting too long in the great outdoors. They don't know it, but we are going to weigh each plate and calculate their average serving size. And we'll compare it to Ministry of Health guidelines. We'll come back to find out how they got on. After the break, is there anything in ice cream that could be harming me or my kids? Some of those colourings can cause hyperactivity. And when is ice cream not ice cream? Ice cream can be heavy on the sugar and fat. So how much can I actually have? First, how are the players doing? We've asked the leaders to dish up their normal serving and we're secretly weighing each dish. The Ministry of Health recommends a serving size for children of two scoops. Two, two scoops! or 140 grams. So what have we found? The green tea dished up the most, while red gave the smallest helpings. And all were within Ministry of Health guidelines. So good work from the kids today. See, I'm the con. This is the ice cream. But 140 grams seems like a lot of ice cream. It might be okay for active kids. How often can the rest of us have it? over to our dietitians. How much ice cream should we have? Well, that's a really loaded question. It depends on your lifestyle and it depends on your weight. For most people, one or two scoops of low-fat ice cream a week is absolutely fine. And if you don't have a problem with your weight, you can get away with eating ice cream more frequently. But one 140 gram serving of ice cream can deliver six teaspoons of added sugar. So is that going to affect my kids' behaviour? I think what happens is that they have a, a hit of sugar uh, and that gives them a big boost of energy and, and so they display some of those sort of hy hyperactive behaviours but it's often quite short-lived. Synthetic colours used in flavours from orange chocolate chip to boysenberry have also raised questions about effects on behaviour. Most of the research has shown that it's a combination of some of those colourings with a preservative called sodium benzoate that isn't normally found in ice creams that can cause hyperactivity in sensitive children. However, in the European Union, foods containing any of six colours must be labelled with a warning. These colours have been deemed safe to be used here, but people suspecting an intolerance could talk to their doctor. Synthetic colourings are used in many varieties of ice cream. One thing I've always wondered is, what's the difference between regular vanilla and French vanilla ice cream? Traditionally, French vanilla ice cream was made from an egg yolk base, and that gave you that yellow colour that you expect. Now, you can add two synthetic colours to create that yellowness, to give you the expectation that this is French vanilla. These are Sunset Yellow and Tartrazine, two of the colours under the spotlight. Just about every pack of ice cream in the supermarket contains some numbered ingredients, so what are the others? And are there any we should avoid? Most ice creams are made with emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are an ice cream because in ice cream you've got two fundamental parts, a watery part and a fatty part. Fat and water don't mix. Add an emulsifier, it makes sure that they do. It encourages them to hold hands. Common emulsifiers in New Zealand are 471 and 477. Great big scary names, uh, but they're completely harmless. And what about the stabilizers? The most common stabilizers are gums. These are variously made from tropical beans such as locust, guar, and of course, importantly, from seaweed. We get a lot of gums from seaweed. Stabilizers are used to control the texture of ice cream. This is a, a non-dairy ice cream, dairy free, and it's called a premium frozen dessert. And in here, the ice cream sensation is created by gums that give you that thickening, smoothing effect. And that's pretty much it. All the stabilizers used in New Zealand ice creams are approved ingredients. Stabilizers are also used in soft serve to stop it melting too quickly. But is soft serve ice cream? Soft serve is made in a similar way to ordinary ice cream. The difference is it's frozen just before it's served. Prior to freezing, it's refrigerated, which could make it vulnerable to contamination with listeria. MAF Food Safety deems ordinary ice cream a low risk for listeria. But there is a risk with soft serve, and it's recommended pregnant women avoid it. 
And there's plenty of urban legends claiming that soft serve contains chicken or pig fat. We checked with food scientists and soft serve retailers and found none use chicken or pig fat. So that's a myth. Remember that for ice cream to meet the food standards definition, it must contain at least 10% milk fat. But when you're in the ice cream aisle, there are many look-alikes that don't call themselves ice cream. So for example, this So Good here, what this means is it doesn't have any milk fat, it's a dairy-free product, so it can't be labelled as ice cream. However, there are plenty of low-fat ice creams with just 3% milk fat that do call themselves ice cream. Are we being misled? It is a little bit confusing because technically these low-fat ice creams aren't ice cream because they don't contain 10% milk fat. But at the end of the day, consumers have the information in the nutrition information panel and the ingredients list, so they do know exactly what they're buying. Our food safety officials are looking into this issue. So what have I discovered? Full fat, low fat, high in sugar, no sugar. There's plenty of choice when it comes to ice cream. While low fat ice creams are a better source of calcium and protein, they can still be high in sugar. So considering there's no completely healthy ice cream, I'll be making sure I don't overindulge too often.